Alright guys, episode number three. This time we're in the studio here and I'm gonna answer some of your questions about my setup, about mixing, mastering, writer's block, whatever. Let's go into the first ten questions right now. I think it doesn't really matter what kind of program you use at the end. You can do the same stuff in FL Studio or Ableton. I started with FL Studio years ago, but then two and a half years ago I switched to Ableton and then I realized it's way easier for my workflow. It's easier to set up all the, the presets and everything. I really like Ableton more and I'm happy that I switched. I think in the beginning when you start producing it's not really needed that you have like a big studio or something. The only thing what you need is a laptop, some speakers or maybe good headphones. There are really good headphones out there right now and then you can actually start and if you want to go on a little bit you can get a MIDI keyboard and then slowly get into like a bigger setup or whatever. But what you really need is a laptop, software, that's it. So since I started producing, I always try to mix already within the project. So what I'm doing is I make some groups for the drums, for example. I make another group for the, for the lead sounds, for the bass. And then I cut off all the low ends already. I boost some highs. I clip within the groups already. So I limit all the groups a little bit that I don't have unnecessary peaks in the master, that's actually it. So I do it in the project and not afterwards because sometimes when you have like a big project with a hundred tracks inside, which happens a lot in my productions, then it's really hard to find your mixing mistakes uh, within the mix. So it's way easier to cut out like bad stuff you don't really need already in the project. So when I started producing I had one idea and I tried to finish this idea in one session or then the next day I kept going but I found out that I'm really struggling with this sometimes because then you're losing ideas or you're too focused on this. What I'm doing now is I have a bunch of different projects and then this day I'm producing this song and then when I'm, when I'm not inspired anymore I just open another project and I'm working on that project that feels a little bit refreshing to me because then you're not overthinking too much and I think the main problem for me is when I'm listening to one loop like a million times I'm not really inspired anymore but if I give this idea another two weeks without listening to it again then I'm again inspired to work on this again or have some other ideas for the project and it helps me a lot and I can only finish this song when I'm really sitting here and I'm getting super excited to play this song. I finished already a bunch of songs where I was sitting here and I'm like, ah, can I really send this to a label or not? Is it good enough? Then I just delete it and it dies on my computer somewhere. But when I'm sitting here and I'm like, yo, this is really exciting, then I know, okay, this idea is done. All right, my favorite plugin is Nexus because it has like a bunch of presets. Every preset sounds pretty good. And when you're, when you're looking for some layers, for example, you will always find something with a Nexus. Number two, FabFilter Pro Q. In my opinion, this is the best EQ on the market right now. Number three is ShaperBox. This is a sidechain plugin where you can split frequencies and it's amazing to mix with it. Number four is the Waves SSL compressor. I always use it on my master and it really squeezes all the sounds together. And number five, and then we come to the next question, is Mini Monster. I used this plugin since the beginning for all my basses, for all my low ends and it just has the best sound. And within the last 10 years I tried many other bass plugins or plugins to, to get some low ends but this one is really the best. It has some analog sounds but it's digital and it's just amazing. So this is a funny question because so many people are asking me how do you do your lead sounds. Actually people expect that it's like one sample I'm always using but the secret is, or which is not really a secret, but what I'm doing is I just layer a bunch of sounds. So that just for an example, there's like one group and to get one sound at the end, I layer at least eight or 10 sounds together. I have a compressor on the whole group. I squeeze them together and there comes like one big sound. So it's not one sample, it's a bunch of layers to get at the end one big sound. And then over compressed it, sidechain on top, kick in it and boom. 
So on my master chain there is not really one plugin which does all the magic. I just cut out some low frequencies with the Pro-Q3. Then there is the SSL compressor like I said to squeeze it all together. A limiter at the end to get some loudness and that's it. No magic. But you gotta make sure that you mix your track right before. Clip some groups already and then you're gonna have the best result. I think a good studio just makes the whole process a little bit easier. You don't really need it, but when you have a studio, it just you just hear the mistakes while mixing a little bit easier here. I have my sweet spot here, it's all measured to this spot, and I just hear it immediately if I do something wrong or where I put my stuff in the mix. But before that, I always went to my car because I used to know that sound system a lot, and I, my car was always my reference, so I was listening to it when I done track, I went to my car, I was driving around and listening to it and then I went back to my computer, changed some stuff and this is something what I don't have to do anymore because I hear exactly what I'm doing wrong and what I need to do right to mix the track. So when I have something like an artist block or a writer's block, I just feel it immediately nowadays. I'm, I'm just sitting in front of an empty project, trying to make a cool club banger or whatever that can be a Monday morning after a long tour. And when I'm not inspired then, I just leave it. I just go away. I'm not spending time on this day here anymore because it just doesn't help. Do something else, do something different, refresh your mind and the next day when you come here you're gonna be inspired again or maybe the day after. But at the end it doesn't help to look into an empty project and being frustrated about it. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. I'm gonna see you here again next Sunday. See you soon. Bye bye.